Today is, sep <clears throat> is September 14th, and I'm having a hard time thinking about where I should start. And basically, the reason is because is that from the point that I left off, where the special supervisory agents of the FBI had interviewed me. From that point, I feel that so many different things took off in so many different directions. It's really a challenge to try to explain all of the different things that occurred. And some of these things were going probably to the same source, but it's, it's um, I don't know how to describe it other than to say, it's like suddenly all these tributaries are going, you know, we're forking off or branching off into, you know, one, one thing was branching or three different kind of connected rivers or whatever were suddenly branching off like forked lightning and going in so many different directions with regard to different individuals who had by then a motive to not like me or to work with one group or another group and trying to sort everything out it gets um, a lot more complicated because once I had reported the FBI it was very hard to find to find out because they are sometimes secretive um, to find out where my conflicts of interest were coming from because by that point I had you know some some Catholics that really hated me who thought they really believed everything that they were told and, and that they read and they <clears throat> felt that they had a duty some of them to to hate me then there were there was a Jewish segment and although I had just thought it was just this one rape that occurred I did not realize that there was a larger group than that that um, that was involved in sort of pressuring my family I think and wanting to keep me down and so some of those things I didn't even know about and then um, and then of course at that time I didn't know that I was implanted with microchips so I had no idea that I was of interest to the Department of State to NASA um, to the military and to the CIA I mean first to start with I was um I've been an MK Ultra kid along with my parents they sometimes call it by different names now but the program and that kind of thing is still occurring it's never stopped it's actually much more brutal the, um, the rapes of children still occur the drug use experimentation still occurs and you, if you read any kind of documentation about um, MK Ultra survivors from like the 70s. They describe electroshock treatments and all kinds of, a lot of different forms of, you know, being tasered and kept in line with various forms of electrocution and um, pain, painful technology. And that's what they had then. And this is 20 years later, they have much more sophisticated means of putting someone in their place or torturing them. and and using them for research or just keeping them down. So now it's NASA is involved and they use long range targets, they use all kinds of technology and it's much, I guess I shouldn't say it's worse because probably being electrocuted all the time in the 70s is no different than some of the other things that have been, that have happened with the long range technology. but. The same things occur, it's just trying out different means and methods. And what I believe happened was that I was initially tagged into this um, CIA operation as a child. And then they kind of left me alone a little bit. I mean, they, I was actually repressed. I feel that my, they really did control my parents as to what I learned and when and how much I was allowed to learn. Because I remember I had a voracious appetite for learning. And had I 
been allowed to do all the things I wanted to do, I probably would have, um, I just would have been doing a lot more, a lot sooner. So, but for the most part, I was kind of left alone. And then it was in about 1992 when I guess I just, some people decided they didn't like me. Um, by that time I didn't realize, but I think some different CIA contracts were going to other people who were feeling competitive. And that really affected my life. And then once I got, um, once I'd worked for a family on the East Coast and had reported a couple of things, I mean, not things going off here. Um, not reported. huge things, but I didn't realize how important it was to some of these individuals. I didn't realize that a lot of them were connected already to intelligence in some way, so, and they kept tabs on everything I did, so nothing was ever a secret. So I think I got, I had a group of people become very hostile towards me, and what was unfortunate is that I was already at their mercy and I didn't know it. So it wasn't like I was just any any old citizen who was kind of, who was raised in a family who was kind of standalone on their own. No, I mean they'd already been using my parents for research. They'd already blackmailed them and um, tagged them to use me at different times for research. So when they wanted to, when a group wanted to be, you really not use me for research, but just be anti-competitive and to keep me down and to punish and torture my family. It wasn't hard for them to do. It was very. It was a lot easier than it would have been for anyone else who wasn't connected to the government and had not already been forced to work with them or blackmailed into um, top secret projects. So basically, they had me under their thumb. They had my parents under their thumb, and I had no idea. My parents never said a word. I had no clue. I just. You know, at, initially I just thought there was a lot of gang violence against me all of a sudden with all the car vandalisms and then, you know, being raped and everything. I felt like I was being targeted, but I didn't understand that there was an entire framework behind a lot of it and people were watching and looking in and a lot of people already knew who I was and I had no idea who they were. But, you know, they've been keeping tabs on me. And the first time I can re I remember being under surveillance specifically, uh, having that feeling of people are watching me and I don't know who they are and they're strangers, so why are they so interested in me? It was when I was about nine years old. It was at the store actually that I bought this bear for my brother and gave it to him in the store and told him to call it Tubby. But, um, you know, that was in probably around 1986 in Moses Lake, Washington. And I remember there were about five different grown-ups in that store, and a lot of, and they were all watching me very carefully. What clothes I looked at on the rag. There, there were two stories to that store. You know where I went on the on the upper story, where I went towards the um, on the clothing. Uh, an older woman, or a um, probably woman in her thirties, really looking at me hard and kind of smirking. My mother seeming to be slightly shy and just a little bit reserved while she was in the store. She must have known some of those people and what, why they were there, but I didn't know. I just knew all of a sudden that there was a man and a woman who seemed to be married. They were watching me. Uh, there was a woman by herself who had blonde hair kind of shoulder length blonde hair and she was watching me very closely and then a couple of other individuals and that's my earliest memory of being under surveillance 
of some kind from somewhere. So, you know, when I was then engaged, involving the FBI, I didn't know that there were already files on me, that people already knew what kind of program programs I was in, and that for me to try to get them to take a rape claim was going to be probably more difficult for me because when they had allowed rape to occur and sexual assault to occur against me when I was a child before I was age three for the MP Ultra program, you know, it's not like they're just going to suddenly make a big deal about rape. They already decided that I had no rights from the time I was born, that, that they owned me. They felt that I was their property and they disposed of my rights whenever they decided they wanted to. They disposed of my rights as a child. I was raped um, and forced to service men. And I was drugged with LSD. I was also hypnotized, I believe. Although the time that I remember, um, she wasn't successful at hypnotizing me, and that's why I remember it. I don't remember what she was trying to do. So, um, when they get away with doing these things against a child, it's sort of it's. Um, It's going to be uncommon for them to then... Um, I have to check on something, so I'll be back. <laughs>